thank you so much and uh, you know just uh, attended the last bit of the previous session really exciting and congratulations um, it's great discussion uh, on this uh, in week long um, community engagement led by Mojo Lu. So congratulations to all the organizers. Um, my name is Kesong Nodrup Masali, and I'm here today uh, with Ed Cable, my co-presenter, to talk about uh, OpenGDP, uh, a digital public good for digitizing the large-scale cash transfer programs uh, globally. Um, both Ed and I are um, uh, have the privilege of being the founding volunteers of OpenGDP. So this is, you know, really our voluntary contributions. Uh, we have day jobs in, in other places. This is our voluntary contribution along with a bunch of other folks to the challenges that we saw during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and what we saw was that more than 70 countries had scaled up their cash transfer schemes. Um, and most of them um, were fast tracking enrollment and payments since, since uh, you know, the cash transfer was the single most important response uh, to getting assistance in the hands of people who needed it most in a timely and transparent manner. But there were challenges. And uh, firstly, there were a significant number of people who were not part of the social cash transfer infrastructure in countries, including some of the most vulnerable people, such as migrants, the informal workers, the refugees. Uh, secondly, with the increase in poverty due to wage loss or increased expenses such as health, et cetera. There were a growing number of citizens across the countries where, you know, who were newly eligible for COVID-19 cash transfer relief from their governments or humanitarian organizations. And lastly, we saw that um, the limited digital identity and payments infrastructure was incapable of serving uh, portions of the population in a targeted and timely manner, which further exacerbated the economic and social impact um, of COVID-19 on the vulnerable as well as on women. So if you move to the next slide, um, what we want to cover today with you are four key topics. Uh, the first is a little of uh, a little bit of how this is uh, all a continuation of the great work that happened during the Ebola crisis. So, uh, of course, the contribution of the organization that I work at uh, uh, during the day, the Better Than Cash Alliance, uh, uh, UNCDF, UNDP, as well as the tremendous leadership uh, uh, by the government of Sierra Leone. Uh, secondly, um, you know, what is Open GDP as a framework, as a and how as a connector of open source solutions, the work led by Mosef, Mojolu, Mifos is critical to the potential of open GDP. Um, thirdly, uh, some of our deployment conversations and we want to reflect, uh, share our reflections so that we can contribute to help solve the universal dilemma of open source deployments in countries, uh, especially with governments. And lastly, a few asks from the wider community. Um, so during Ebola, I uh, was the payments team leader um, uh, in West Africa. And after a, a round of strikes and, and tremendous press coverage globally, uh, uh, we, we um, you know, strikes by health workers, we realized uh, 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 in Sierra Leone, especially that payments digitization needed to address enrollment to succeed. So, you know, being able to successfully, it, you know, it would be impossible to pay the right health worker, the right incentive amount in the right digital wallet uh, or payments account without this end-to-end -end approach to GDP. Uh, GDP. So it was no longer about, you know, does he or she have a mobile wallet account? Um, um, you know, can we partner with one or two uh, uh, digital financial service providers? It was about looking at the overall ecosystem, being able to leverage it in a crisis and get um, relief uh, transfers or incentive payments to health workers as fast and as transparently as possible. Uh, but more important that, than that, it was also about identifying the right health workers. Uh, and, you know, that required tremendous digitization work upstream, uh, which is, you know, part of uh, Open G2P. Um, and doing that led to about um, $10 million in savings over a period of just a couple of months for the government. So it was, it was, you know, uh, it was amazing. Um, and, and, uh, you know, this was also one of the, uh, great ways in which, um, we saw such, uh, 
great championship from the government as well as development partners. Um, in the next slide, you will see that you know in COVID nineteen, when we saw the similar challenges that were uh, you know faced by governments worldwide, um, uh, we took actions as as volunteers, and of course there was uh, the leadership of the government of Sierra Leone and a few individuals. We set forth the Open GDP framework that builds off of the Ebola stack and focused on four key components. The first one on digitizing enrollments. Um, uh, the second one on creating a unique integratable registry of citizens verified with foundational identity when available, like MOSIP. And thirdly, the digital payments of cash transfers, leveraging, of course, the level one infrastructure like Mojo Loop where av available. And lastly, using all this information to create an effective, responsive um, recourse mechanism that identifies who solves what issue. So, you know, for someone saying, hey, I'm eligible, but I didn't receive receive my payment, um, it's likely going to require a combination of, you know, a payment partner and uh, the cash transfer program to understand whether it was because the application was rejected at the level of the program or it was simply a payment mistake, you know. Uh, so the digitization of end to end, this framework enabled a very uh, effective and responsive recourse mechanism. And, and um, if we move on, um, we uh, you will see the uh, uh, the um, Open GDP's uh, uh, stack. And what's really unique about this uh, Open GDP framework is that it builds on uh, existing infrastructure at the country level, um, and governments can either pick up the full stack or parts of it. You know, and for example, a country may need just an ERP system that can run millions of deduplication records only. Uh, or it may need the whole stack end to end. Um, so basically what Open GDP framework does is it creates a framework for the components to work together um, and the system required by governments to register, verify, enumerate beneficiaries, send funds, verify that, that, that the funds have been received and so on are often lacking in one or more areas. And Open GDP basically provides a framework for the bounded components to share necessary information to work together, um, but also uh, share this information through secure tokens. So, you know, protecting privacy and securing data are some of the key themes that we um, have you know uh, really prioritized in the design of Open GDP, and in essence, you know, um, uh, Open GDP is really uh, for us the way we define it is that you know it's an it's an open source connector uh, that plugs into the local ecosystem to deliver additional value. Um, in the next slide, you will see you know basically how this uh, framework runs. Uh, uh, end to end, um, there's an enrollment bit, the list management, the disbursement, and then sort of the beneficiary and its uh, recourse. Um, and, you know, um, it bill, it, you know, these blocks can be used independently or as an end to end solution, and it really builds off of existing systems. So it's not about saying, hey, you know, your legacy system doesn't work, but rather uh, trying to build on top of um, uh, existing investments that governments may have already made. And we find that, you know, a, um, not only is that cost effective, but it's also very valuable when you're speaking to uh, uh, countries to deliver the uh, added benefits of, uh, open, of adopting open GDP. Um, in the next slide, um, you know, I'd say that with the framework roughly in place, and, and we would say that, uh, you know, with, with much of our uh, volunteer programmers and architects, uh, and you know, I'll talk a little bit about them a bit later, we're 80% there in terms of the stacks. Um, maybe in a, another two more months of uh, investment in building out the stacks, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that comes along. Uh, but we're also glad to have some active community members, um, you know, and that's a really important component of Open GDP. Uh, or part of Open GDP, and, and uh, I'll talk a bit about that as well uh, in the subsequent slides. And then, of course, the deployments where we're having active conversations and also learning about, you know, how does one uh, engage government in the design and procurement of open source uh, solutions. Um, in the next slide, um, you know, we, these are our guiding ideals. It's uh, definitely a work in progress uh, and we continue to iterate on that, but we're 
spread about is that OpenGLP, uh, you know, which started in the middle of the pandemic last year, um, and you know, simply as a voluntary uh, um, initiative uh, uh, with you know zero external funding, uh, is recognized as a UN digital public good and one of the seven open source frameworks with the potential to achieve financial inclusion and advance the sustainable development goals. Um, and a really important guiding principle for us, you know, uh, is is that you know is that uh, is that is being that glue between different core open source components and how we remain agnostic and vendor neutral. And and lastly, you know, another one that I'd like to highlight is that. We cannot say it enough, but gender intentionality in how we design the framework. And Uh, and center in in terms of uh, you know our guiding uh, ideals. Um, the next slide is on the community. Um, you know these are the principals and the volunteers who have been leading the Open GDP framework. Of course, the government of Sierra Leone as a key leader. Um, then uh, there's IDT Labs, which is a social enterprise based in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Mephos and Dial in terms of its knowledge uh, brainstorming um, around the frameworks, etc. And then the key architects are, uh, you know, Dr. Senge, who is currently the chief uh, innovation officer at the government of Sierra Leone and the uh, education minister for the government and uh, Sultan Masadi, uh, who are basically the key architects of uh, Open GDP. Um, with this edge, should I hand over to you? Sure, thank you, Kazem. So I'm just gonna spend about five minutes or so doing a very high level demonstration of some of the Open G2P components. And then we can share with you after the session, a link to the demo server in the repositories where the Open G2P uh, code is located at. But first off, you know, I wanted to thank Kazem once again for the opportunity to be a part of the Open G2P initiative and help to bring to bear the efforts that we've been working on at MIFOS along with Payment Hub and Mojo Loop to help you know, provide more of these end-to-end -end components and reference architecture that can be deployed for these G2P scenarios. So just one moment, I'm gonna go through a couple slides and then I will switch over to another tab. So this is just like a high level architectural representation of you know, how the different reference architecture and open source building blocks can be swapped in and out. And so right now for the reference implementation, that we're working on in Sierra Leone. You know, we're taking and extending the work from the Ebola crisis, and this centers around like an Odoo uh, ERP, you know, backend to provide the database for beneficiaries and handle the recourse. And then we're also connecting with Open D Open Data Kit to bring in, you know, mobile form and offline uh, data collection and have that centralized with the Odoo ERP. And then at the disbursement layer we're building out additional connectors for the payment hub within there to provide the disbursement to both GT Bank as well as Orange and Afrocell money. And then we're leveraging the other components that Sultan has built, you know, both on the enrollment and verification side, as well as the recourse side that Kazem spoke to. So let me just, and this is just another diagram showing what that high level represent representation of the payment hub is and how we're extending it to provide these connectors. And then I'll talk a little bit more about some of the roadmap items we see, you know, to tie into Mudge Loop, to tie into better bulk disbursement, pre-processing, et cetera. So just one moment, I'm gonna switch tabs. Yeah, so first off here is just uh, a list of the repositories on GitHub for Open G2P. And mainly today, I'm gonna focus on the Odoo repository where Sultan has built out a number of custom modules to provide that backend database for beneficiaries. And then I'll also, you know, just touch on a couple of the other services that he's built, the deduplication engine, as well as the verification engine, which tie into the enrollment process. And then I'll speak once again about how we're extending the payment hub. So right now, you know, I'm just logged in to the version of Odoo that Sultan has extended. And then within here, you know, you can see a list of the current beneficiaries. And then for each beneficiary, 
you know, we've, he's extended the profiles based on, this is in the context of the Sierra Leone response, but you can extend it with the different identity and other fields that are needed. And then the participants can be added into different programs. So I could register this beneficiary into a number of programs that we've created here. Check the start date here. Fun of a live demo. So I'll do that later on then. But I can register the beneficiaries into different programs. And then once they're re registered into different programs, we handle generating the disbursement instructions here within the, the system. And then once we've created the disbursement instruction, what we're our developers are currently working on right now is building out the specific connectors for Sierra Leone. So we're working on providing a connector to GT Bank as a payment service provider, and then also providing connectors to the AfraCell and Orange money on the mobile money side. And then we'll be able to handle uh, the bulk disbursement via the payment hub. And so that was just at a super high level, you know, going through some of the components. And like I said, I'll send a share link to this after our session at demo.opengop.org. Let me switch back to our slides and then we have a couple points before we conclude. So yeah, so one of the items I just wanted to touch on once again, and you know, we've remarked upon this in the past, but what we'd like to do at the MIFOS initiative is try to leverage the existing lab environment that we have that has both, you know, MIFOS and Mojaloop there deployed and begin to integrate and implement some of these open G2P components, because we do believe, you know, this lab environment can help to demonstrate, especially at a reference architectural level, you know, how these foundational digital public goods like MOSIP for digital ID, MIFOS for account management, and Mojaloop for payments can all be brought together, utilizing open G2P as the connective tissues to tie the systems together. And then where, you know, we envision being able to focus a bit more is one, you know, at the bulk payment pre-processing level, working on adding more of that into the payment hub itself and some of the work that we'll demonstrate tomorrow as part of the payment hub around, you know, building out connectors to the ISO systems will also be valuable for this G2P context. And then we would like to, you know, work more deeply with the MOSIP community to try and identify what those points of integration that we could provide in this lab environment to show how both MOSIP and Mojaloop are implemented in this reference architecture. And then I'm gonna pass it back to Kazom that's gonna talk about some of the live deployment discussions we're having. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the roadmap after that. So thank you, Kazom, I'll pass it back to you. Great. Um... So on to the, you know, what we're learning from some of the deployment discussions. And so far we, you know, as we have these conversations with the government and, you know, government is large, uh, they include, you know, central banks, the president's office, the social protection team. Um, you know, we're, we're not aiming to replace their existing technology or solutions, but rather aiming to deliver a new framework in which uh, you know, to approach, um, uh, you know, to, to bring this, uh, this uh, open G2P, uh, you know, open source building blocks that can be deployed to uh, complement existing solutions in place. Um, and we do, we do have active discussions um, in Sudan, for example, to build, um, uh, you know, their, their system to deliver, $5 to 80% of the population in Pakistan to look at, uh, uh, you know, pension disbursements to over a half a million people with a goal to increase it, you know, with the government's goal to increase uh, it to 15 million people with an end-to-end -end framework. And then, of course, in Sierra Leone and in Mexico for some components of open GDP. And there are two key lessons that we wanted to share with the community, especially, you know, as as digital public goods tackle the opportunity of how to get to deployment. Um, because I think, you know, there's been a fair amount of investment in uh, DPGs as well as in community engagement. And, um, 
And we realized uh, soon enough that, you know, we really needed to prioritize deployments because if someone is using the framework, then it's easier for other governments to also adopt. Um, and everything sort of follows from there. Um, and there are two key lessons. One is that, you know, and we also heard this uh, yesterday uh, during the community engagement is that governments do need a lot of help to participate actively in the design uh, of the RFA procurement for open source frameworks. Um, and, you know, this means that we are actively part of uh, helping shape in terms of reference, um, helping uh, make design choices, uh, helping understand what the choices are before making them, et cetera. Um, and then related to that is the second lesson that as advocates for open GDP or any open source uh, frameworks and solutions, we need to be very vendor neutral and function on principles. You know, we cannot be the ones uh, uh, advocating for this and then getting paid to implement. Uh, and, and, you know, I think this is a really important point for us to remember uh, uh, as we look at, uh, you know, unlocking the tremendous potential of uh, digital public goods in, in some of the markets that need it uh, the most. And then on to our uh, last slide, over to you, Ed. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I know, Simeon, we got to wrap up. So just, you know, we are seeking additional, like, builders and contributors from the technical community and the documentation level. So as part of, like, the ongoing roadmap, you know, we're working on that refer reference implementation in Sierra Leone. And then we would like to, you know, further extend our lab environment to actually use uh, MIFOS as a store of value in open G2P context and also, you know, implement Mojaloop more so as, like, a micro switch to provide that interoperability layer amongst different local payment systems and then also the bulk payment pre-processing that I mentioned earlier. And then we're also to, eager to bring on other supporters of the initiative itself for the reference implementation. You know, Paul Moritz has provided some funding to help guide that in Sierra Leone, but we'd like to further the development of some of these core building blocks and also work on implementations in other countries. And then lastly, we'll just close, you know, with links to our GitHub repositories, our documentation, the demo site and the website where you can find more about open gdp excellent thank you so much ed and uh Keza. um i see some questions and some discussions in the chat and in discourse so um ed Keza, if you want to jump on those that would be appreciated Definitely. Um, yeah to everyone else i would also point you uh to discourse just so that we also have an archive of every question um and comments and continue the conversation there uh asynchronously um, as usual, please give us your feedback on the poll uh, on your screen right now for this session.